Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Myself, Dr. Lalita Poloru, working as librarian at Institute of Pharmacy, Nirma University. Now, we will be looking into the module Scope and Need of Information and Communication Technology in Library and Information Centers. The objectives of this module are Introduction to ICT in Libraries Developments in Computer, Communication and Network Technology Need and Purpose of ICT in Libraries Drastic changes occurred due to ICT and internet with reference to information resources and services. The learning outcomes are, the learners will be able to understand the impact of ICT in libraries. They will attain knowledge and appreciate various developments that took place in computer, communication and network technology. Learners will also understand various types of library and information resources and services provided using ICT and internet. In this model, we are going to look into the introduction to the module, generations of computers, classification of computers, functional units of computers, need and purpose of ICT in library and information centers. The computer's ability to store and process vast amount of information and communication technology with its ability to transmit this information from one location to another converged to form information technology or informatics or information and communication technology. The information technology refers to mosaic of technologies, products and techniques combined to provide new electronic dimensions to information and retrieval activities. The term information technology represents convergence of three strands of technologies namely computer, microelectronics and communication. Information technology is used to describe products and services that came up with rapid changes in computer and communication technology and their fusion. The technologies which improve the efficiency and effectiveness of an information system or service fall under the purview of information technology. Some of these technologies are available to the libraries for many years while a few are now emerging as important tools for overcoming the barriers in the access and dissemination of information. In order to understand the drastic changes that occurred in library and information centers due to the advent of ICT, it is necessary to understand various developments undergone by computer, communication and network technology. First, let us look into generations of computers. First generation, the computers manufactured using vacuum tubes are called the first generation computers. Electronic, numeric, integrator and calculator was first such computer. It was able to produce the tables by carrying huge number of calculations involved accurately and to the required precision and because it was electronic at a speed which made it all possible. Universal Automatic Computer that is UNIVAC 1, IBM 360, IBM 701 are some of the examples of first generation computers. Second generation computers were manufactured using transistor, became very small in size, efficient in terms of speed and memory increased several thousand times. Tiny magnetic rings called magnetic cords were used as memory components. 
magnetic disk storage was also used. Some high level languages such as formula translator that is Fortran, algorithm language Algol, string oriented symbolic language Nobal were in use during that time. IBM 1401, TDC 12 are some examples of second generation computers. In the third generation, small chips consisting of the capacity of 300 transistors were invented. These chips were also called as integrated circuit chips, that is IC chips. The computers designed using IC chips were still smaller in size and efficient in speed and memory capacity. Due to good amount of memory capacity, high level languages like Fortran, FOR and common business oriented language COBOL were in use. TDC 316, TDC 332 and IBM 370 are some examples of third generation computers. Fourth generation computers in this the microprocessor is designed by integrated chips having large quantity of circuits with large scale integrations that is LSI or very large scale integrations that is VLSI. When computers are manufactured using LSI, VLSI circuits, they are known as fourth generation computers. The first phase of fourth generation was in between 1971 and 1985. Fourth generation saw the coming age of Unix operating system and time shared interactive systems. These systems became user friendly and highly reliable. The effective cost of computing came down. Second phase of fourth generation is in between 1986 to 2000. And this is the age when various programming languages like Java, C++, etc. evolved along with computer networks. Intel 8086 to Intel 80486 DXT, DX2 are examples of fourth generation computers. Fifth generation will use artificial intelligence, natural language processing, pattern recognition, character recognition, speech recognition, image recognition and processing medical diagnosis are some of the areas in the fields of artificial intelligence. Main features of fifth generation computers are the user friendly interfaces with multimedia features and availability of very powerful and compact computers at cheaper rates etc. Artificial intelligence include, includes robotics, neural networks, game playing etc. Now after completing the, after looking into the generations of computers, let us see the classification of computers. Computers can be classified in several ways. Actually the classification is arbitrary and it is impossible to rationally classify these broad ranges of available machines. But they can be classified on the basis of functionality, efficiency, mode of use. Analog computers. Analog computers only work with continuous numeric data, analog quantities. These computers are used for processing control applications. The physical quantities like pressure, temperature, etc. are represented by different electric lines with corresponding voltages. If the temperature in a particular room increases, then the voltage in the corresponding wire increases. These wires are interconnected with proper circuit design. Analog computers have very low memory, but they work at high speed. Examples thermometer, 
speedometer of a car, etc. Digital computers, these can process numerical and non-numerical data. The input and output of digital computers is based on on-off signals. Digital computers process information which is based on the presence of absence of an electrical charge. Their memory is high but speed is low compared to analog computers. For example, these are the computers that we program and use. These computers accept digital data, process them and give the output in a printed form. Hybrid computers. These computers use the principles of both analog and digital computers. The hybrid computer has the accuracy of a digital computer and speed of an analog computer. For example, a petrol pump contains a processor that converts fuel flow measurements into quantity and price value. In the hospital intensive care unit, it is used to measure heartbeat. Generally, it is used in scientific and industrial applications. Then, microcomputers. A microcomputer has a microprocessor chip as its CPU. It usually had a floppy disk drive, which is now obsolete, as peripheral memory. Some microcomputers have a word length 16 bits and 32 bits. The speed of microcomputers is in the order of 100 kilo instructions per second, that is KIPS. The microcomputer called Superpower in Server Alpha 8400 based on Alpha 211640 chip operates 1 billion instructions per second, that is 1 BIPS. Mini computer. The mini computer will have only one CPU with many terminals and keyboards. It can be used by multiple users at a time. Mini computers are as faster as microcomputers and have memory capacity around 10 megabytes. Auxiliary memory of 10 GB is also attached. Some examples of uh, mini computers are PDB8, PDB11, PDB11 to 70, etc. Super mini computers. The mini computers that use 32 bit CPU chips are called super mini computers. They have a speed of 1 million instructions per second and memory capacity of 512 KB to 1 GB. They have all high level languages VAZ11 and MC300 are some super mini computers. Mainframe computers. They are also called MIDI computers that use 32 bits, 48 bits or 64 bits CPU chips with memory capacities from 1 megabyte to 16 GB. These systems have a speed of 10 million instructions per second. DEC 10, DEC 20, CDC Cyber 170 are some mainframe computers. Maxi are supercomputers. Supercomputers are the most sophisticated computers that are used for weather prediction, crystallographic calculations, complex molecular structural calculations and designing of supersonic aircrafts. These computers use 64-bit word length chips and they have a speed of several billion operations per second. Their memory capacities are several gigabytes. Examples of supercomputers are Cray, Super Cray, Cyber 205 and Super SX1. And then the classification of computers as per the mode of use. Palm top PCs. Computers with capabilities nearly the top PCs which can be held in a palm are known as palm tops. They accept handwritten inputs using an electric pen which can be used to write on a palm top screen besides a tiny keyboard 
have small disk storage and can be connected to a wireless network. A palm top computer has also facilities to be used as a mobile phone, fax and email machine. Laptop. They are also known as portable computers. They should run with batteries, hence designed to conserve energy. Laptops can be connected to networks. Wireless connectivity can be provided. Currently, even laptops are equipped with dual core, which is a 64-bit processor with 64-bit data path and processing speed of 3.0 gigahertz. Personal computers. The most popular PCs are desktop machines. Early PCs had Intel 8088 microprocessors as their CPU. The PC market moved from 8088, 80286, 80386, 80486, Pentium, Pentium 2, 3, 4, and now to Intel Dual Core and Quad Core. The new Intel Dual Core can execute any piece of code that ran on the original 8088 but the dual core runs about 3000 times faster. Currently PCs are equipped with dual core which is a 64-bit processor with 64-bit data path and processing speed of 3.0 gigahertz. Workstations. They are also desktop machines which are more powerful as they have provided with high speed processors that can execute more than 10 times of the tough PCs. Earlier workstations normally used RISC processors, that is RISC processors, but currently they are using x86 to 64 microprocessor with various combinations of multi user operating systems like Microsoft Windows, GNU, Linux, distribution, etc. Distributed computer system. It refers to multiple computer systems working on a single problem. In distributed computing, a single problem is divided into many parts and each part is solved by different computers. As long as the computers are networked, they can communicate with each other to solve the problem. The advantage of distributed computer system is maximizing performance by connecting users and IT resources in a cost-effective, transparent and reliable manner. Distributed computer systems first, first started with the use of data entry terminals on mainframe computers, then moved into mini computers and is now possible in personal computers and client server architecture with more tires. Parallel computers. It is a type of computing architecture in which several processors execute or process an application or computation simultaneously. It helps in performing large computations by dividing the workload between more than one processor, all of which work through the computations at the same time. Most supercomputers employ parallel computing principles to operate. The primary objective of parallel computing is to increase the available computation power for faster application processing or task resolution. Now let us look into the functional units of computer. Computers are made of processor, peripherals and the memory. The functional units of computer are central processing unit that is CPU, memory, input output and storage devices. The following are the components in the central unit of the computer. Motherboard, it consists CPU, RAM, cache, ROM, chips with BIOS and startup program chips, chipsets that is controllers, ports, buses and expansion slots, drives, hard disk, floppy disk it is now obsoleted, 
CD, DVD, ROM, etc. Expansion cards, graphic card, that is video adapter, network controller, SCSI controller, sound card, video and TV card, internal modern and ISDN card, peripherals, keyboard and mouse, joystick, monitor, printer, scanner, loudspeakers, external drive, external tape station, external modem. Now let us look into the motherboard. The motherboard is the main circuit board in a PC. It contains the circuits and components that run the PC. Major components found on motherboard are central processing unit. It is the brain of every PC. Every scheduling computation and control occurs here. BIOS BIOS that is basic input output system is a non-volatile memory that contains configuration information about the PC. It contains all the codes required for CPU to communicate with the keyboard, mouse, video display, disk drives and communication drives. When a PC is powered and it uses the BIOS that is boot code to set many required functions that bring the PC to a point where it is ready to work. RTC that is real time clock chip keeps date, day and time in 24 hour format just like your watch. The PC uses this clock to timestamp files as they are created and modified. Chipset. These are the large chips that integrate many functions that used to be found in separate smaller chips on the motherboard. They save space and cost. The functions performed by these chipsets often broken into <coughs> two devices with one providing an interface from the CPU to memory and the other providing controllers for IDE, ISA, PCI and USB devices. Primary connectors. The primary connectors of a computer system include power A 20 pin connector accepts a plug from the power supply. This plug carries DC power to all the circuits on the motherboard. Keyboard a mini DIN 6 pin connector found at the back of the motherboard is where the mouse plugs in. Display. This connector is not integrated into the motherboard but is included in this list since its function is absolutely necessary. Serial connectors of a PC are standard serial connector. This connector has been around in PCs since they first appeared. It was originally located on ISA expansion type cards. USB universal serial bus is designed to power devices connected to it. Parallel connectors are standard parallel. This connector has been around in PCs since they appeared. It is used to connect your printer to the PC and moves data at about 1 MB. MB. SCSI that is small computer system interface moves data at a maximum of up to 80 MB. It is not integrated into most PC motherboards but can be added to a PC as an expansion card. Expansion card connectors. The CPU connects to expansion card connectors through one of the chipset ICs. These connectors allow special function cards to plug into and work with the PC. Here the points to remember are the external devices available are connected to the system unit called CPU 
via cables. Each cable plugs into a specific port on the system unit. The ports are usually on the bank uh, the ports are usually on the back of the system unit, but sometimes they can be on the front or side as well. Drives. A drive is a medium that is capable of storing and reading information that is not easily removed like a disk. Different drives in a computer system are hard disk. The hard disk drives are usually installed in one of the three to half inch internal drive base in PC. Data to and from the motherboard is carried on a 40 pin ID that is integrated drive electronics cable. Data is stored magnetically on multiple rigid disks that are stacked up with pancakes. The sensors float just a few microns above the rotating disk surface and can read and write data at very high rates. Most commercially available hard drives rotate at 5400 or 7200 RPM that is revolution per minute which translates to 90 to 120 revolutions per second respectively. Compact disk drive. In this data is stored on the surface of the disk a laser attached to an arm that moves back and forth across near the disk surface and send light towards the disk surface which is coated with of a thin layer of aluminium. Compact disks have become the predominant removable storage media for PCs and can store 700 megabytes of data. Data to and from the motherboard is carried on a 40 pin IDE cable. There are two types of compact disk drives available for PCs. CD-ROM read only memory is the older type. As the title implies, it can only read CDs. It can read and it can read any standard CD and most CD R type disks. CD RW is Rewritable unit can read and write CD R and CD RW type disks. It can also read standard CD type disks. Digital versatile disk drive DVD. It is installed in one of the external 5 1 by 4 inch drive base in the PC. It is designed to access data stored on a DVD. A laser moves back and forth near the disk surface and access data at a very fast rate. These are two types of DVD drives that typically go into PCs. DVD-ROM can read DVDs and CDs and DVD-RAM that is random access memory units can read and write DVDs. A standard DVD can store up to 4.7 gigabytes on one side of the disk. USB flash drive. It works slightly differently as it uses memory cards to store information on. USB drives are solutions to store data quickly, fast and huge in size. USB drives are also known as flash drives. They are plug and play portable storage devices that use flash memory. The advantages of USB drives are lightweight, small size, fast speed, low price, huge capacity, plug and play functionality. The disadvantages are easy to be theft, carriers of viruses, etc. Peripheral. Peripherals are auxiliary devices that connect and work with computer such as mouse, keyboard, printer, etc. That is, they add a functionality. The keyboard is the first input device developed for the PC. There are many different keyboard layouts and sizes with the most common for Latin based 
languages being the QWERTY layout named for first six letters. The standard keyboard layout provides 104 keys organized as four groups that is alphanumeric keys A to Z and 0 to 9, location keys that is home, end, etc. Numeric keypad, function keys that is F1 to F12. Data is transferred to PC over a short cable with a circular 6 pin mini DIN connector that plugs into the back of the motherboard. Mouse is the most common pointing device used in PCs. It became prevalent in the evolution of the GUI operating system. By default, the left used to select items, the right button is assigned as a context or alternate menu. A single wheel is normally set to scroll up and down on the active page. Monitors. For long time, CRTs were dominant displays for use with desktop PCs. They are relatively big and bulky. Data is transferred to the display on a cable with a 15-pin D-shell connector that plugs into a connector on the video card, which in turn plugs into one of the PC's expansion slots. LCD technology is the latest one and fastly replace, replacing CRTs. Printers. The printer takes the information from the screen and transfers it to paper or a hard copy. There are many different types of printers with various levels of quality. To name a few are dot matrix, inkjet, la inkjet laser, plotters, thermal printers, etc. Modem. It is used to translate information transferred through telephone lines or cables. Computers take digital signal from analog line via modem. Computers give digital signal to modem and it converts it into analog form. A high speed connection also requires a modem, but because the information is transferred digitally, it isn't required to change the signal from digital to analog, but is used to create the connection with. Scanners. A scanner scans the image from the top to bottom one line at a time and transfers it to the computer as a series of bits or a bitmap. The basic principle of a scanner is to analyze an image and process it in some way. Image and text capture, optical character recognition or OCR allows to save information to a file and computer. There are various types of scanners based on the technology they adapt. Some of them are flatbed scanner, sheet fed scanner, handheld scanner, drum scanner, etc. Cards. Cards are the components added to computers to increase their capability. When adding a peripheral device, make sure that computer has a particular slit needed by the device. Different types of cards are sound cards, color cards, video cards, network cards. Now the hardware sections are inside the computer there are different parts referring to as hardware. The hardware section can be primarily divided into three sections input, output and processor. Input unit. These are the devices that allow the user to enter data and instructions inside the computer. Input unit is formed by the input devices attached to the computer. It takes the input and converts it into binary form so that it can be understood by the computer. The below mentioned are input devices, keyboard, mouse, floppy disk, as told, it is an obsoleted input device, scanner, MICR, that is used for authenticating check 
checks in banking, barcode reader for identification articles through unique barcode, OCR that is optical character reader, hard copy to computer, etc. Output unit, the device that will give the process data or information to us is called the output device. The output unit is formed by the output devices attached to the computer. Examples of output devices are printers, plotters, speech synthesizers, coders, etc. Process R is the most important part of whole computer system. Without it, all peripherals, memory are of no use. The CPU is the main controlling center of computer. It guides, directs, and governs its performances mainly it is divided into three parts control unit arithmetic logical unit and memory control unit it controls and coordinates alu and memory unit it extends control unit it extends control until the required operations are done properly by alu and memory it contributes significantly in the program execution. ALU, that is arithmetic logical unit, handles all the mathematical and logical calculations and functions executed by CPU. For example, when two numbers get multiplied, these numbers are sent from memory to ALU where multiplication takes place and the result is put back in the memory. Memory unit is a very small portion of CPU that stores temporary instructions and data in CPU during execution. Memory of a computer is like a predefined working place where temporarily keeps information and data to facilitate its performance. When the task is performed, it clears its memory and memory space is then available for next task to be performed. When power is switched off, Everything stored into the memory gets erased. This is known as volatile memory. If memory doesn't get erased when power is off, then it is known as non-volatile memory. Memories are divided into two basic categories. They are primary memory and secondary memory. Primary memory is fixed on the motherboard it is comparatively small memory used for manipulation and temporary storage. It is for immediate processing needs and makes big difference in final output. It is made of fast semiconductors. Examples are RAM and ROM. Secondary memory. It is a permanent storage medium. Hard disk drives, CD, DVD ROMs are examples of secondary memory. It uses variety of technology like optical, magnetic, Blu-ray, that is digital optical technology, etc. In this unit, we have seen into the generations and functional units of computers. And in other modules, we have discussed about software, system software and application software, operating systems, networking, etc. Now, let us see the need and purpose of ICT in libraries. The application of information technology in libraries results in increased operational efficiency. It relieves professional staff from mundane jobs that involve a lot of duplication so that their efforts can be fruitfully used for user-oriented library services. It improves quality of services rendered by the library. Use of information technology ensures ease of functioning, accuracy, and economy in human labor with great speed. The exponential growth of information has made manual system redundant, giving way to computerized information storage and retrieval tools. Effective and efficient handling of huge quantum of information is only possible by using computers 
which have the added advantage of being highly accurate and efficient that adds value to information. The new information technology facilitates improved management of physical and financial resources. The advances in technology and its availability at lower cost has also raised expectations of users from librarians and libraries. The information technology on one hand facilitate wider access to information for the library users and on the other hand it facilitates wider dissemination of information products and services generated by the libraries. The availability of networks facilitate resource sharing and high speed communication with other libraries. The impact of information and communication technology on operations of library and information centers can be viewed from information data management of collection, organization and access service to users. Scope of utilizing ICT, the emergence of internet, particularly the World Wide Web as a new media of information delivery has been coupled with availability of powerful hardware, software and networking technology. ICT has a wide scope in information library centers from developing resources to various information services to delivering them with reference to mode and format to the users. The scope is with reference to collection management that is increasing number of publishers are using the internet as a global way to offer their publications to the international community of scientists and technologists resulting in large scale appearance of STM electronic journals on the web. The internet and web technology provide an unparalleled media for delivery and information with greater speed and economy. Moreover, the web-based electronic information products not only eliminated paper, physical storage and transportation costs, it also offers a host of other possibilities for incorporating multimedia and hyperlink features to electronic documents here to impossible on paper media. Now, more web-based electronic information products are available and utilized creating pressure on the traditional libraries which in turn are committing large portions of their budgetary allocation for either procuring or accessing web-based online or full text search services. CD-ROM products, online databases, multimedia products, etc. The library and information centers as consumers of electronic journals and online databases are benefiting greatly from this technology driven revolution. The information products of technological revolution in turn triggered major shifts in the traditional practices and policies of buying, storing and accessing journals. ICT has also brought so many changes in information processing and retrieval. The changing forms and formats of knowledge paved way for new methods of its organization. Copy cataloging, shared cataloging are the buzzwords today to have bibliographical control of the library holdings. However, the technical issues involved are more complex than it appears to be. Further development is organizing digital and web resources using metadata schemas. ICT has also brought so many changes in the way we provide information services. The ever-growing internet collections provide access to top quality databases, literature search through subject gateways, downloadable audio books and music, instant messaging, reference services like Ask a Librarian, online reference, real-time reference service, 
digital reference service, etc. Owing to these developments, libraries services underwent change, focusing more on the facilitation of information transfer and information literacy rather than providing controlled access to the resources. Most functions in modern libraries are being performed using software packages that are now available off the shelf. Most functions in modern libraries are being performed using software packages that are now available off the shelf. Several libraries have their catalogs available on the internet with a web-based search interface along with links to resources either acquired through external agencies are created in-house. Most libraries are connected to the campus network and subscribe to electronic resources to serve the information requirements of their academic community. Several libraries have taken up small-scale digitization projects for part of their collection. The librarians and information professionals are required to develop skills that are required to use, develop and maintain IT-based services and products used by today's library.